Are you aware of this? Uh, Congresswoman, as I said, I haven't seen the photos that you're holding up uh, before. Maybe, well, I posted them on my Twitter account. It's, it's public. You know, maybe I don't you guys spend are, a lot of time on Twitter. Well, you know, you, you sh oh, I'm sure you do, because the Department of Homeland Security, organized with other offices, has censored many Americans, including myself. I'm not me, part of the Department of Homeland Security. Uh, right. Mr. Ray, you should, you, should be, you should be interested in investigating terrorism. What? Wow. <laughs> FBI. <laughs> no. Come on! Come on, uh, you look at that clip, right? You hear Donald Trump saying he's gonna terminate the Constitution. And then you have Chip Roy, I think delivering the most eloquent democratic speech of the year, saying, demanding, name one thing that the Republican Party has done. One thing of substance, nothing. It's, it is Willie. It is government by and for the gesture. That's all it's about. We're going to show Chip Roy in just a moment, making that passionate plea to his colleagues in the House. To, we got to do something. Yeah. But the, here, this is a corny point, but I think you'll appreciate it because you serve. But the idea, I think, of public service, mm -hmm. of shaking all those hands and raising that right. money and going to town hall events and doing all the things to get elected, is to make people's lives better. I'm right. going to go to Washington. I'm going to pass legislation that makes people's lives easier, lessens their pain. What we have now is a collection mm -hmm. of people, not all of them, in fairness. There are a lot of people doing good work there who just want to get on TV, who want to be on TikTok, who want to raise money, who want to be famous, who want to have podcasts. And that's the result of that. We just watched perhaps the prime example of <laughs> proud ignorance proud in the House of Representatives. They wallow yeah, in it. That's a great you, term. You know, you know, the funny thing is people would always like after I got out of Congress, go, oh, you must have hated that. I said, no, actually, it's great. I said, you know, people like 10 years later come up to me on an airplane mm -hmm. and they'd say my grandparents were having trouble. Uh, they were they were having trouble. They were about to lose their farm. The IRS had been there for like eight, nine years, and it, you know, and yeah. and they came in and I called up the, the IRS person. I said, Listen, if they've committed a crime, throw them in jail. If they haven't, please wrap it up and get off their property so they can get back to work. And the IRS yeah. said, Yeah, okay, I'm sorry, we're going to do that. And there's so many times where you actually have a chance to make people's lives better. If you're interested in making people's lives better. And it's such a cool job. Well, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> it what? is. No, you no, loved it, it. it. Well, I, I, it I'll is, tell you. It is there, such there, an honor. There, it is a great honor. Greatest honor of my life for people to like and actually vote for me. tell everyone what your favorite part of the job was. Um, what, what, what do I say uh -oh. at home around the dinner table? Constituent tables? services. Cons Come that, on, you okay. loved... That's the funny thing is I was always, Rev, I was always on there going, and we need to uh, shut this agency down, and we need a flat I went all of this stuff, and it was all, that's what people saw on TV. But we obsessed over constituent services. And I said, when somebody comes in, like, you take care of them, you tell me what I need, We'll send a letter to the agency. We'll call the agency. And when I was out, everybody's like going, oh, I did, you know, saying you were a champion for this or champion for that. Was that your favorite part of the job? I go, no. My favorite part of the job was I could actually do something to help people's lives. And it made a huge difference. Somebody would be stuck in Peru and their mother their mother's funeral was, and they couldn't get out. And we would get a call in the middle of the night, call the State Department, the State Department, or, and you know, they'd take care of it. And they'd get them home for things like that. And so when I see jackasses, like screaming <laughs> and yelling, and just gesturing for TikTok and $25 donations, it's just, you know, it's not like, you people go, oh, it's horrible for the institution. Yeah, it is. But it's horrible for the people they serve, are supposed to serve. It's all gesture, and it's no governing. No, I, I think that that is the most, uh, in my opinion, negative part of it. They're not even serving the people they claim to represent or care about. And, and I think that, you know, it goes when you talk about what uh, the constituents' services were the main thing they got you have. It goes to your roots 
The Bible says the servant is the greatest among us. And I think that too many of us want to be leader without servant. If you're servant, you can lead. And, and you and I have talked about it in my own journey. I've had been around people that just the noise was the objective. And Mrs. King and others said to me, no, you use the noise to get in to make a difference. If at right. the end of the day, you haven't helped the family or the broader community you're fighting for, then you're just using them as props. Well, and you and I have talked about this before where parts of our own lives, we were the noise. That's right. We were part of the noise. And when you find out that actually you can do more than that, uh, like, like you said, Mrs. King said to you, hey, you got to do this, but you got to do it responsibly. And you use the noise to go somewhere where right. you can have the noise orchestrated into where it provides something that will lead to substance. I still make a lot of noise. You make a lot of noise. Turn on the TV six o'clock every morning. I, I will. <laughs> a lot of noise. I know. Shut up. <laughs> but but <laughs> it's headed somewhere. It's uh. not noise just to be making noise. And I think that that's the difference between what we're seeing with the so-called Freedom Caucus, and even some of the activists on both sides of these issues, they're more caught up in the noise right. than they are in where we're gonna go.